Good evening, class. My name is Brandy. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, I wanted to make sure you are all awake. I know we're getting closer to dinner time. All right. So is everybody ready to learn tonight about intelligence? Yes. yes. Good. So I'm going to introduce you to Louis Leon Thurstone. He was born in 1887. That was over 120 years ago. Kind of think about that. He died in 1955. Uh, that's actually the birth year of Disneyland, for those who want to put it in perspective. <laughs> All right. Uh, so let's get started tonight with some history about where he came from. In 1912, he received his master's in engineering from Cornell. And during that time, he was an assistant to Thomas Edison. Class, I'd like you to take a moment, think about Thomas Edison. Now turn to your partner and tell your partner some of the inventions that you can think of that Thomas Edison did. Phonograph. Uh, light bulb. Fighting with Tesla. Though. All right, class, go ahead and finish up those thoughts. <laughs> you put the audio in the movies, huh? Okay, does anybody want to raise their hand and discuss what you and your partner came up with for his inventions? Yes, uh, electricity. Very good. Is there any other ones out there that we want to discuss? The light bulb. Fabulous. All right. Moving right along, though, because we're talking about Thurstone. Uh, we're going to go ahead and talk about his time period from 1917 to 1923. He actually taught at the Carnegie Institute of Technology. So he's a very smart, intelligent man. Uh, did a lot of work, like we said, with Thomas Edison, who was also very intelligent. In 1923, he did some research in Washington, not the state up above us, but the state of uh, District of Columbia, where the president lives. So put it in perspective on the East Coast. In 1924, he was a professor at the University of Chicago, and that was until 1952. So he spent 30 years teaching there, just about. And also during that time, he was the president of the American Psychological Association. A lot of us use the APA writing style in our work, so that kind of helps you relate it all. All right, let's now talk about some of his ideas and interests in his field. Uh, he defined intelligence as a mental trait, the capacity to make impulsive, focal, um, impulses focal at their early unfinished stages of formation. So therefore, it is the capacity for abstraction, which is an inhibitory process. Class, I'd like to, you to turn to your partners now and discuss what you think intelligence is as defined by Thurstone. Go ahead and turn to your partners, please. Thurstone? Then you can ask again. Yeah. Okay, so I hear in the audience that a couple people are kind of wondering, so let me go ahead and repeat that so you can hear it one more time. It's the intelligence is a mental trait, so let's break that down. So it's going to be a trait, something that we have. Uh, and it's the capacity to make impulses focal at their early unfinished stages of formation. So looking at that, it's going to be at the earliest stages. This is when things are first arriving. So. Once again, a mental trait, the capacity to make impulses focal at their early unfinished state of formation. He said, therefore, it's the capacity for abstraction. So it's when things aren't all together quite yet, and which is an inhibitory process. Go ahead and turn to your partners one more time and see if you understand it a little better. It's a mental trait. That's what they were doing. Yeah, things are getting the formula formed and holding it on your own. It could be abstract and it's inhibitory. And a process. And it can be measured in certain ways. All right, class, let's come back. Yes. How would you put that in layman's terms? <laughs> what he's trying to say is that. In the early development, our intelligence is actually going to be a trait. And I'll kind of go into a little bit more of the details here in a moment. Uh, it does relate to uh, another theorist, Spearman, and some of his ideas. So let me go ahead and continue on with that so that maybe it can be a better understanding for everyone. All right. So let's get he, um, what he did is he focused on psychology. 
and psychometric statistics and human intelligence. So this is kind of where it's coming into the intelligence factor. He created methods for scaling psychological measures and assessing attitudes, and then he discovered a way to test his theory. So what he's best known for is developing a new factor of analytical techniques to determine the number and nature of latent constraints within a set of observed variables. So latent term means that it exists, but it's not visible. All right, anybody confused about what latent means? All right, so this is where it kind of answers your question about the intelligence. He actually um, developed the theory of primal mental abilities, and he modeled human intelligence and challenged some previous beliefs that were held by Charles Spearman. And Spearman believed, actually, that intelligence was based on one major factor, and he called this the G factor, the general factor. So it all came from one general source, okay? What, uh, what Thurstone said was that um, that was not necessarily correct. So go ahead and turn to your partner real quick. Talk about how you feel about Spearman and the general factor of intelligence and tell me if you agree with Spearman and then we'll discuss Thurstone and see if it changes your mind. And she has on the board the things that Thurston's going to look at. She's going to look at all of these things in IQ. They're part of it. And some of them are. You know, the one that's different is the process and that's real. Oh, yeah. All right, class, let's start to wrap it up. All right. Um, Thurstone, contradictory to Spearman, said that the G factor was actually a statistical artifact that bec occurred because of the mathematical procedures used to study it. So he in turn said, this G factor isn't a factor, it's what happened when we did the mathematical analysis of everything. He said it's not a general factor, but actually seven independent factors called primary abilities. I'm going to go over them, but you can read them here with me for those of you who are going to be visual. Your first one is going to be word fluency. Your second is verbal comprehension. We have spatial visualization, number facility, associative memory, and perceptual speed. Class, I'd like you to turn to your partners and repeat these so that you can kind of remember them. Word fluency, verbal comprehension, spatial visualization, Look how many are related to vocabulary. All right, thank you. Um, he also went ahead and did research by testing people. It's great when you go about and say you have a theory, but the best way to make sure that theory becomes something that people believe is by testing it. So he tested people with similar IQs. He picked a number say 120 and said, okay, everybody with a score of 120, I want to test you and I want to know what your primary mental abilities were. He did find later on though that some of these seven that he found during those tests did coincide with Spearman. He said therefore that both existed through a mathematical formula. So he acknowledged that Spearman did have a general factor and that sometimes some of these would actually go together. All right, so the great thing about Thurstone is that not only did he find these ideas, he led to another great theorist who uh, many of you who've read about any of the multiple intelligence in teaching know him as Gardner. So he influenced Gardner. Does anybody in the class want to talk about who they think Gardner is? And he does. I'll talk Thank about Gardner. You, Andy. <laughs> Gardner, he is a professor, I believe at Harvard, but he based his work off of Spearman, decided that G didn't really didn't wasn't a good number, wasn't a good idea. Came up with multiple intelligences. A lot of them are are based off of those seven. He he's added he's taken away the perceptual speed. He's added interpersonal and interpersonal um, intelligences, nature. Um, he's working on existentialism right now, so he's, he's still got ongoing work with Thurston's ideas. Perfect. Andy did a great 